welcome to today's academic success workshop video. Today, myself and Catherine will be presenting information on the topic of soft skills and interview techniques. This is one of a number of academic success workshop videos presented to you by our support net department at Fresno State. Um, we're going to go through this topic from the perspective of providing academic coaching. So I'll start by uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is Jamal Washington. Um, I am an employee in our support net academic coaching office. I earned my bachelor's degree in mass communications from Cal State San Bernardino. I've also worked in higher education for over 15 years, and I've been with our support net program for over four years. August would, March, uh, would mark the fifth year as a member of our support net team. Uh, in my previous work history, this is where I've really uh, been able to put a, a high focus on um, supporting students when it comes to interviews and soft skills. Uh, working at the career in the vocational college setting, the career placement in the field of study is the measure of success when it comes to student success. So a lot of times you can have students who are A students, B students, really great GPA, but the key to getting to the career goal that they have is to really focus on the small details connected to that success. And when it comes to getting employed, your GPA is great, but a lot of times it's really being in a space where we can market ourselves, where we can showcase our talents and where we can really set ourselves up to be um, uh, seen as a member of a team. And so we really have to build our interpersonal skills, our interview skills and our soft skills to take that next step forward from beyond just grades, GPA and completion of a program. I've also been able to serve as a mentor to students and work collaboratively with our Fresno State uh, uh, students and staff when it comes to equity-centered leadership. And being in those spaces where you're a mentor and you're working on leadership allows you to be able to have a voice, to be able to be familiar with having the empathy to have difficult conversations. And I think when it comes to um, guiding someone towards uh, building interview skills, recognizing where there's a need to build on soft skills. You have to be able to have somebody who's able to have those conversations without it being too awkward, too confrontational, or uh, just too abrasive in how that message is delivered. So, um, you know, we're all a work in progress and having somebody who's open enough to sit down and have that conversation and be um, able to approach it from a perspective of not, um, being so judgmental, but really coming from a space of leadership development, of um, being mindful of the equity and the, the uh, internal awareness of who we are in the spaces we're in. I think that's really important for being able to have a conversation of how soft skills are important to implement and how all of the other elements for interview success apply as well. And last but not least, another thing that's really giving me an uh, uh, awareness to be a part of this conversation is having served on campus search committees at Fresno State and really seeing what separates candidates from their application process to being invited for the interview and what is going to distinguish candidates who go from in interview to uh, advancing to the next phase. And so I really wanna get into with this presentation, some of the small details that you'll wanna be aware of when it comes to advancing from uh, those phases of the interview process as well. So my name is Katherine Mize and I am one of the academic coaches here at SupportNet, but I have also been one of the graduate interns for the Learning Center in tutoring. And I'm also one of the academic counselors here um, at Fresno State in another department. And so, um, well, I would like to contribute to this workshop is that my experience of being on both sides of the panel, um, definitely soft skills is something to uh, note down and to be aware of, especially um, when it comes to the job search and whatnot. So um, 
I guess a little bit of more information about me. Uh, my BA was in sociology. I'm currently graduating this semester um, with my master's in student affairs and college counseling. Um, my experience kind of ranges from being on mock interviews to actually being on the panel, you know, for support net um, interns. And that was a crazy experience that I did learn a lot from. Um, as well as, like I mentioned earlier, last semester I was one of the interns in tutoring, so I was able to be on that panel as well. And just um, certain workshops I've been able to attend regarding, you know, just what are interviewers looking for, you know, um, something that we don't really consider um could be like one of the top things or so you know just being on this workshop today hopefully i can provide additional insight just from my experience as well can you tell our audience what they can expect to learn today yes yeah, so some of the learning objectives is to one gain a greater understanding of soft skills and how they are rooted in the interpersonal relationships tied to career success Number two, increase awareness of the prep and delivery strategies that advance interviews to new opportunities. And last but not least, increase knowledge of how to incorporate these soft skills, available resources, and preparedness into interview success. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one thing that I thought would be great for us to start with here is really to see how um, both of these abilities tie into our long-term success. And so I wanted to start with a collaborative study here that's going to really showcase how important soft skills are. Now, soft skills are going to be those personal attributes that enhance one's individual interactions and their job performance and career prospects. So it's really, really connected to that interpersonal um, connection that you have with those that you work with. Unlike those hard skills, which are going to be the things that give you the talents to be a contributor, soft skills are interpersonal and broadly applicable. And according to a collaborative study conducted by Harvard, the Carnegie Foundation, and Stanford's Research Center, 85% of one's success at the workplace is attributed to their soft skills, while 15% of the success are those technical skills that get you in the door. So for example, if your um, area of expertise is computer science, computer software, and hardware, you know, those certifications that you have, um, the ability to troubleshoot different things is going to allow you to get into the door for the opportunity. But your soft skills that you execute with your coworkers, with those that you're assisting in that field are the things that are gonna lead to your longevity in the career. And that's one of the most important things that we really want to emphasize today and, and highlight as, as a part of this conversation today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So being that this is a virtual recorded session, we are going to do a role play and just uh, go with the flow of how these two scenarios are going to turn out. So scenario one, leadership of soft skills. Darnell is a veteran employee that works in a department responsible for producing results mandated by weekly and monthly quotas. While Darnell is not the direct supervisor, he observes his team falling further off pace from their weekly goal metrics. He is not entirely thrilled about the prospect of sitting through more, uh, through more frequent and more intense meetings as a result of missing the targeted department quota. He's also directly observed some inefficient habits that may be causing this, de this decline in productivity. While the situation has frustrated him, he's aware of his leadership presence and decides to pull the team together to address it. And so keep in mind, this is scenario one, and what we are going to be looking for is whether or not his interpersonal skills and soft skills are present or not. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but we got to get it together, okay? We are falling way off of where we need to be for the week. And I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I'm not trying to be up in these long meetings all week having the finger pointed at me for what we didn't do. And I know some of y'all are around here taking extra long lunches, smoking your cigarette all day outside, you know, sipping on your soda forever and not coming back from lunch, gossiping in the break room, all of that. You know what? 
You can miss me with that, okay? Because I don't know about y'all, but I'm not in here for that. Response number two, an example of soft skills. And remember, keep in mind the differences. Team, if you guys don't mind, I would like for us to uh, really uh, find a time today to uh, all come together um, and look at where we are with our metrics for this week. Um, I was able to pull a report and I'm starting to get concerned that we are going to fall well short of where we need to be. And I want us to really start looking at what we can do differently to make this change because um, I really wouldn't want to see any of us have to deal with the repercussions or the extended meetings where we have to justify our value because we've missed a goal. And so I really think it can be an opportunity for us to rally together and support each other um, to really make a difference from where we are right now. Uh, is everybody willing to get together, say at 2.30 this afternoon? Now, what differentiated these two responses from Darnell? And since uh, we don't technically have a live audience in front of us, some of the responses have actually been reported from um, students, real students from prior um, academic workshops with this. And so some of the responses were clearly um, focused on the tone, um, the clear explanations and teamwork dynamics where, um, for example, in the first scenario, Darnell was just yelling at everyone. He wasn't, um, you know, basically defining the goals, how we can meet them together. Um, again, the teamwork dynamics versus in scenario two, um, it was very clear, clear cut, articulated in a positive tone. How can we solve this problem together? What is everyone's schedule like? Let's come together and talk about it. So there are definitely clear, um, different leadership styles in these two scenarios. So we definitely wanted to show you what that looks like in the real world, because believe it or not, this, this is real. This is real folks. <laughs> Thank you for, for sharing that because you're absolutely right. And I think uh, what is important when it comes to executing soft skills as well, is you really have to know yourself. You have to know, what your response would be when you're met with a challenge, when you're met with adversity, when you're met with um, a situation that creates stress. And if you know that you're one that's going to um, really come off as, as confrontational uh, or really come off as increasingly aggressive or verbally your tone is going to elevate, um, what, what it might mean when it comes to executing soft skills is that you give yourself an opportunity to step back and not respond so that you can really strategically put together what it is that you want to say um, to really maintain relationships, maintain positive relationships. And instead of quickly responding just to respond, we don't have any control of how others are going to take the message that we put out there, especially if we just respond instinctively. And in the workplace, those relationships have value. And so um, you don't want the stressors, the obstacle, the situation, and the time associated with it to put you in a situation where you escalate the stress of the situation by responding in a way that deteriorates relationships. Exactly. And so, um, as they say, it's not necessarily what you say, but it's how you say it that's going to impact, that's going to stay with people. And soft skills is just being mindful enough to know what I have to say is important, the situation is important. But let me take a step back if I need to, to really think about how I'm going to respond because I don't want to fracture the relationships connected to this work. Well said. Very well said. Okay. And so stemming off of that, um, here are some examples that we want to share with you all about the soft skills for your resume. So. As you can see, there are four domains, um, leadership, team working, problem solving, and communication. And so we want you guys to consider these domains that appear on the resume because um, when you say leadership, you wanna think about what type of leadership, how are you exercising this? So you can be um, prepared for when the interview comes, you're able to define what exactly did you do to um, promote this type of leadership. Same, you know, with all the other domains, as in, um, 
if you put on your resume teamwork, okay, well, how did you promote teamwork? How did you do this? And so then you can, you know, provide examples of during, you know, team meetings, I organize X, Y, and Z. So we want to be able to share this with you. So that way you can be a little bit more detailed because that's going to pop out. That's going to be like, oh, we're looking for someone specifically who knows how um, to do um, strategic planning and knows how to effectively communicate with one another. They're very big on group projects and group work. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So definitely wanted to share this with, uh, with you all. We're gonna move ahead to interview tips and techniques. And these are gonna be things that can be applied for success once you're in that interview setting. So some of these are gonna sound redundant, but we're also gonna go into why these uh, recommendations are important for success with the interview. Um, so in this first uh, list of, of tips that we have here, you really wanna to plan to get to your interview 10 to 15 minutes early. And now it goes without saying that your punctuality and your time uh, when it comes to arriving early is important and it gives employers that first impression. But what is also the advantage of getting to your interview 10 to 15 minutes early is that it allows you to really start to consciously absorb the cues of that workspace. What is the vibe? What are the images and the posters in that workspace um, conveying about values and um, principles that are important to that organization? Is there a, a mission statement that you see posted somewhere? Um, what are those interactions? What does it look like the coworkers um, who already work for that company, what does the vibe look like in their office? Um, so you can really have an opportunity to pick up on those things and carry that information into the interview because um, interviews aren't necessarily uh, situations where we're trying to evaluate who answers the questions the best. It's really about making a decision about someone whose qualifications and personality and interpersonal um, presence is going to match with what the company values, with what they can see working with their organization. So really getting an idea of what is the, um, the full personality of this organization by getting there 10 to 15 minutes early and really absorbing uh, uh, visual things that provide um, some context for values, um, priorities, getting an idea of the persona of the employees and the culture. Um, and that 10 to 15 minutes that you're there can really be something you carry with into your actual interview to be successful. You also wanna remember that professional attire and grooming is a must. So um, be sure to cross the T's and dot the I's when it comes to professional attire. This is not a time to kind of stay on the trendy side. And we see a lot of examples of professional attire that kind of lets the hair down a little bit. So uh, for, for men, in, in, in example, um, you don't wanna wear a business suit and then sneakers at the same time. Um, and I know there's a lot of these things where that's cool, but when it comes to an interview, you don't want your opportunity to fall short because the um, etiquette of interview attire was missed when it came to wearing the appropriate shoes to the interview. Uh, the same thing with the tie, um, tucking in, in shirts for the interview for, for men's attire. Um, all of those rules, you really want to cross the T's and dot the I's. Um, and uh, when it comes to professional attire, our Career Development Center can assist you with um, getting together professional attire items for an interview. So if you do need attire for an interview, definitely reach out to and seek out our Career Development Center. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, that department, where they're located, and how they can assist you. But this is something that you don't want to miss when it comes to uh, your interview. That first impression, you never get a chance to go back and reestablish. And as difficult as it is to deal with, there's a judgment attached to how we look and how people interpret us. And um, going back to uh, the talking points we had earlier, when it comes to um, equity and the judgment that happens, these things are, are there. Those interpretations exist within ourselves, but it also exists within employers. 
and you never get a chance to take it back. So being in the skin that we're in and the identities that we wear, if you are to go in with a tire that doesn't necessarily uh, project professional and you attach that to the identity that others may observe of us, uh, it can really work against you. So professional attire is an important thing to, to really have on point when it comes to an interview. Um, also, just to make things run smooth, you wanna make sure you have extra copies of your resume, business cards, your portfolio. Um, these are things where if you're going into an interview where there's more than one interviewer or you're before a panel, um, each person is able to look over items that you really wanna highlight in that conversation. You wanna know your portfolio items and highlights to make smooth references to them during the interview. So if this is dates or outcomes that you've achieved, you really wanna know those and not really um, be in the situation where you're scrambling through to try to show what you did, but you don't necessarily know the outcome to the T. This is really not gonna speak strongly to the fact that you are a key contributor to that outcome. If you don't know the outcome, if you don't know those items or you're off with the dates, so really know your portfolio items and highlights to make smooth references to them during that interview. Most importantly, I would say that first impression is something we wanna keep in mind because we are focusing on that interpersonal aspect of success with uh, soft skills and in interviews. So be pleasant to everyone around. Greet everyone that you encounter. Be polite to everyone you meet. Don't minimize or maximize who you're gonna be polite to based off of titles or who you know is connected to the organization. Um, and your interview begins the minute you enter the work site. The minute you drive into that parking lot, the minute you turn onto the street where that business is located, already start thinking and carrying yourself as a candidate because you never know how soon eyes are on you and already making an interpretation of who you are. Uh, I had a friend share with me that he was uh, sending out uh, a candidate to a job that was looking to hire and the candidate before they even got on the job site uh, was cut off on his way to the interview and ended up you know having some not so favorable uh, interaction with the person that cut them off uh, so this this candidate pulls into the parking lot parks the car gets out the car heads into the building for the interview and lo and behold the person that cut them off that they had this interaction with was headed to the same interview as one of the employers. And let's just say that the outcome of that interview didn't go so well. So a lot of times we think when we walk in the door or when we sit down, when we check in for the interview, that's where the interview begins. But your interview could easily begin as soon as you're on work grounds, as soon as you're turning into the parking lot. So think about what that means. Does, what does that mean for the music you're gonna play in your car when you go into the interview? What does that mean for, uh, you know, just how people perceive you in that space and how that might carry into the interview with you. You really want to be mindful of that going into the interview because you don't want that interpretation to be something that uh, follows you. Um, engage positively with the receptionist and any other staff you encounter. Consider cold calling or engaging a current staff member to gather insights about the work. With um, uh, software applications, uh, software programs like LinkedIn, it's easy to go to a company's LinkedIn uh, profile and maybe identify a couple of employees that work for a company. And maybe there's some that are connected to your network. Maybe there's someone at this organization who's also a Fresno State graduate that you might be able to reach out to and, and talk to briefly about um, this company you're interested in applying for, uh, talking about the work environment, the company culture, these could be things that help you when you go into an interview. So definitely consider these in addition to a cold call where you maybe just call and say, hey, I'm interested in possibly applying for this company. Um, could you share in, over in the next few minutes a few things that would help me with making the decision to apply? And a lot of times you can encounter a variety of people in a variety of roles who just may have time to talk about their organization, the values, and things that can help you going into an interview. You also wanna be mindful of the messages you convey non-verbally. So um, when it comes to displaying confident non-verbal body language, this can be projected in eye contact, uh, the handshake, your posture, um, all of those things. Are you fidgeting? 
Um, so, so really being mindful of that nonverbal body language when you get posed the question, um, just even being mindful of your facial expressions. So if you, your, your forehead, you kind of frown up, you know, when you get a question like, uh, tell me about the, oh, and, and then your forehead, you know, goes in. Um, you know, just being mindful of all of those nonverbal messages that we convey and trying to make sure that we are prepared and go through this interview scenario and practice interviews and mindfully observe ourselves and give ourselves feedback. Because these are things where when you're in an interview, you want to get all of the mistakes out by practice before it comes to a point where your mistakes could have you fall short of an opportunity. And last but not least, you want to turn off and put away your phone for that 30 minutes to an hour or however long that interview is. You don't want a distraction. You don't want a ringtone. You don't want outside messages to amplify or work against this opportunity that you've gotten to. It takes a lot to advance from application to interview. And so you want to make the most of that, um, of that first step that's happened by putting the most into making that interview advance to an open door, to an opportunity. So just allowing yourself to be distraction free uh, can really put you in the best space to put tunnel vision on this opportunity and coming away with success at the end of it. And a few more um, tips uh, just to continue on from that. I want to also emphasize another helpful tip for you guys um, when you want to practice there's also like recording yourself as well, because let me tell you, when I first uh, recorded myself, I did not realize how many facial expressions I do every five seconds. So that is one way to capture, I did not realize I did that, or I didn't realize I said that so much. So I definitely wanna um, recommend if you have the opportunity to, please record yourself, or at least um, find someone who you trust will give you this critical, um, this feedback for you so you can be aware. So to continue, uh, prepare your responses to the most common interview questions. Um, a quick Google search of the job application that you are, um, you know, are going to be interviewed for can go a long way. Um, greet every participant of the interview with a genuine smile and a handshake. So Taking the time to, as soon as you enter, like um, Jamal had mentioned, first impressions are something that you can't get back. So you want to make it count. So if there is a panel of four, you want to try and make yourself um, be burned in their memory. You know, do you want to, to make yourself like, hey, how you doing? Shake their hand, give them a smile, and then um, go ahead and have a seat because they do remember that. Um, other than that, practice positive nonverbal body language, again, like smiles or um, just, you know, with your hands placed firmly in your lap. Um, and, and like I said, video record yourself interviewing, or interviewing and analyze your voice, your eye contact and responses. I guarantee you, you will find something. <laughs> Um, take a pen and paper to write down questions, names, etc. during the interview and after the interview, if you can, if you have the pen and paper accessible to you, if you want to jot some notes down, um, you can do it in a professional manner, but definitely as soon as you're done, try and remember everything that just happened because that's going to go a long way if you acquire a second interview, third interview, etc. And, you know, you might be a helpful resource to others who may be applying for similar job, um, you know, job descriptions. So there's that. Uh, use the appropriate terminology for the career you are interviewing. Answer all parts of interview questions. Um, provide clear examples, stories, experiences to interview questions when possible. So those two tips link together because this will tie your experience to actual um, actual experience that you can provide to this new company. So you wanna be clear, you wanna capture them with, yes, I do have experience. Let me tell you how I have the experience, what I did um, in that situation and relate it back to the current situation of the company you are applying to um, and how that example and um, experience you have is relevant, how you're going to maximize it for them. So that's what we mean by being clear and give stories, like paint a picture. 
So also you want to tie answers back to the values and the needs and again, the global position and have meaningful questions to ask your interviewers because usually at the end of the interview, they do typically ask, do you have any questions for us? Make that very meaningful. Again, burn yourself in their memory. <laughs> so, you know, if one of the, I will admit that I will always, always ask the question, um, what are some challenges that you experience in your day-to-day -day basis of, of your day-to-day -day functions? Oh, or um, what is the most rewarding thing about your job? Those are two examples I like to say because for some reason it always catches them off guard and it always makes them remember me. <laughs> so um, I definitely want to share that experience with you all. So um, after that, review and, and or clean up your social media. So you know, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Instagram, you might not want to be, uh, you know, flaunting some pictures of how you were during New Year's or, you know, celebrating the job opportunity because they will, they may um, look you up. They may see certain things and be like, wow, this, this is a, is a very um, interesting character. Do we want this as the face of our company? So that's something to be mindful of for sure. I would say that our Career Development Center is a valued resource. And one thing that we uh, are sharing with you from their website and, and from their services in connecting students with interview success is this STAR method that is highly recommended to be used at your interview. STAR being an acronym for situation, task, activity, and results. So following that format, when you highlight your qualifications for a job, consider talking about situation, tasks, activities, results. So set the scene or the story. Talk about that situation. Talk about the task and what was your specific responsibility. Talk about the activities. What did you do? And then talk about results. How did the situation end? If possible, try to quantify or capture your results in something that's um, um, can really detail the impact. We had an 85% success rate in reaching, uh, following up with customers or in getting people to this goal that we had. Um, I think following that method is going to be really important. So we can see in this picture, we wanna show you a few, again, examples, since we can't be live with you, of how meaningful it will be if on those first impressions. You notice that this person is engaging with the receptionist. So again, as soon as you get into that car, as soon as you step into that parking lot, as soon as you step in, like foot into that office, you want to be mindful of how you are presenting yourself. Who are you greeting? Who are you talking to? Because again, those first impressions don't just start with the interviewers, um, like at the interview. It starts the moment you pretty much get into your car. So. Just be very mindful of that when you are, you know, heading for your uh, potential new job. And also consider how you would respond to interview questions if it's just you and one interviewer, or if you're in a situation where you have multiple people in a panel before you and you're interviewing, how do you maintain eye contact? How do you engage each person on the other end of those questions and really make a positive impression before an audience? Now, while this can create nerves, this is also a reality for a lot of positions where there's input, there's collaboration, you're going to be working with teams, and you still have to um, be able to articulate your accomplishments, your credibility and qualifications. And it just might be that the setting is that you have to um, make that impression before a panel or a committee. So also factor into, um, your preparation that you just may have to be before an audience. Um, this image hopefully has you to see what it's like to be before that audience, but also to prepare yourself for how you would set yourself up to shine and really um, capture your greatness that you're carrying into that interview setting. So this concludes our discussion here on the topic of soft skills and interview techniques. Uh, I want to thank my colleague, Kat, for joining me today for this discussion here. Uh, I want to thank you for your time to view this video and the information that we had to share on this topic with you today.
I hope that uh, there was something here that was valuable as we went through this information. And I wanna invite you to take a few minutes to click on our link. This link uh, uh, is available either by typing in the uh, text that you see on the screen here, or uh, when you exit the video, you can click this uh, same link, which will be on our academic success workshop page and share your feedback about this workshop video and the information you were able to obtain. This is also what we're gonna to utilize to uh, take attendance for those who participated in and viewed this workshop video. So if you're in a program that is requiring attendance for workshops, uh, completing this survey and inputting your name and student ID are important elements for us to track attendance. Again, I wanna thank you for your time. Uh, uh, Kat, did you want to say anything before we close out? No, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching, and I, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, virtual option, <laughs> um, and please go ahead and fill up the survey, and we wish you guys nothing but the best for your future career opportunities, and we hope that this video has enlightened you of what to be more aware of and how to basically articulate your resume, how to incorporate that uh, versus from paper to in-person, and again, we just wish, we just wish nothing but the best for you guys.